I'm all done with my workout and yeah, I don't so I'm at Starbucks because I work from home usually on Thursdays. I was like, when I is baby girl? <laughs> I'm gonna record myself right now when I order. Just so you guys can hear my favorite drink. Let me order. Starbucks makes me happy. Sometimes I'm like, why do I pay so much for one drink? <laughs> Hello, welcome to Starbucks. What can I get you started with? Um, can I have a grande brown sugar shake and espresso, please? Anything else? That'll be all. 624 is your total today. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, okay, so honestly, I try to not spend a lot like throughout my week, like, because, you know, I work. So I try to like not be spending on lunch and food and whatnot. But coffee, like, oh my gosh, it's just so hard sometimes to stay away from coffee so i'm recording this video pretty much like taking you guys to church with me and well right now it's early in the morning my day is barely starting but i'm going to show you guys kind of like how my day goes all right you guys i got my drink now so i had to reload my app because i didn't have any money in there i'm telling you drinks are going up at starbucks mm. Hello everyone. As you can see, I'm starting to put my makeup on and I'm officially going to start getting ready for church. It's now around 5 o'clock. I need to be ready because I need to do a quick store run before I go to church just to grab something. I bought two new serums. One is for the daytime, one's for the nighttime. Daytime one is like for brighten and to tighten your skin. Helps retain moisturize, um, moisture and hydrates and smooths. And, and then the nighttime routine one smooths and refines helps to improve uneven skin tones but i love serum as you guys saw in my last get ready with me video i've been doing it and i feel like my skin has been taking it well i mean every skin type's different guys so don't think that i know a lot about like skin and stuff i mean if you're sensitive maybe don't just put anything on your face after that i put my lay cream and then i use this as a primer and i got it at sephora and it's been working really well after that i use my regular foundation i blended that and then i use my elf concealer yeah and then i put a little bake a little baking thing so anyways I'm gonna do a quick story time while i get ready because i don't know about you guys but i love getting ready for church i don't know for some reason like i feel like i try so much when i get ready for church it's not well, yeah, there, but... things get messy here guys because you know makeup's not always clean and as i mentioned in my other videos guys i am not a makeup artist so please don't get makeup <laughs> i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are like what is she doing some people have told me like i'm rough with my makeup and i'm just like whatever no, i don't know I just like how it looks at the end of it. But I'm gonna show you guys a quick story time. Someone shared something supernatural with me. And I can't share a lot of information, so I'm gonna be like super superficial. And anyway. So this person told me that she had gone to church for the first time ever, and like her mom had never took her to church. Like she knew about God, but she never had a relationship with him. And I've met a lot of people like this where you know they tell me, Oh, you know, I know God is real, but that's it. Oh, my camera turned off again. I think this is a sign that I need to get it like an actual camera because this is my phone. Anyways, I already put my powder on and going back to the story. This individual says that the pastor makes an altar call and says, you know, if you want to repent for your sins, come to the altar. And you know, this is a person who doesn't even like know a lot about God, and she says that she 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 did it you know she said as a pastor said like you know she took that step and she said she was like really shy and like insecure which is normal like for a lot of you have never like who have never been to church and like you know there's gonna be times where the pastor is gonna make like a special call and it's pretty much like jesus calling you to repent and she said like when she said the sinner's prayer which is what we call you know the prayer when you repent you accept the lord as your one and only savior into your life she said like a ton of bricks or like the weight fell off her shoulder and she just felt like a new person and she asked me a very important question which i want to share with you guys and i told her you know like you know yeah you'll heal and i kind of like give her like a little bit of motivation and then she asked me how did you heal and i was like hmm how did I heal, you know? Because I, I know we've all been through stuff. And just so you guys know, guys, this is what I'm using for my little contour. I like how it went. I tell her, you know, oh, honestly, I was like, I just went to church. You know, I know that church is just the building. But what happens in the building is where, you know, what really changes your life, you know? And I told her, you know, that, that I built a relationship with God. And, you know, to heal, 
it, it really does take the power of God, but it but it also takes a person who's willing to receive the healing. And recently I had listened to a message when I went to California at the convention. A preacher was talking about Joseph when he was thrown and he was sold by his siblings because they were jealous of him and of his anointing and his favor. And what happens is that when he's released, he already has like a high position in the castle and the place where his family's at you know there's a lot of starvation there's not enough food so and the bible says that you know his siblings come back and they come asking for like food because everyone's like on survival mode and i guess that when they come ask for food they didn't know that joseph was in charge of all of that he was the one that was giving out the food because you know the the king trusted joseph so much so even after everything he went through what happens is that when they come and they ask for the food or whatnot you know they don't recognize who joseph is because you know he's just doesn't look the same it's been years and i forgot what part in the scripture it says that joseph pretty much thinks not doesn't blame them but says you know what like it's god the one that allowed me to go through this and he told us like you know the preacher said like you know you really forgave when you understand that it was god who allowed you to go through that and you don't blame the person who hurt you and i shared that with her because if i can explain like forgiveness and healing that's the best way i can explain it like when you're hurting because someone did something to you or if you've been through something um if you're still blaming the person you haven't forgave yet because i i don't know about you but like there's been times where i would say like oh yeah like i already forgiven this person like i'm over it blah 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 but then when i would think about the person or what they've done to me i get angry all over again so i'm like hmm did i really forgive maybe not so you know if you're still like thinking about that person or let's say it's your ex or let's say it's someone who raped you it could be someone who bullied you it could be someone who stole from you it can literally mean anything like you have not forgiven if you don't accept that god allowed you to go through that i know that and i've been to myself where i've asked like i've asked god like why did you allow it to happen god like why why did it happen to me you know and it's not till like now that i'm like okay god if i hadn't gone through that would i really be the girl i am now would i really be able to inspire other people would i be able to tell someone else that healing is possible that you can heal from trauma that you can heal from from depression or whatever you've been through like would i really be able to share that if i never experienced it i wouldn't have you know and sometimes god allows things to happen in your life so anyways back to the story because i'm getting super psychic. but i'm just trying to explain to you guys how i explained to her how i healed and how i understood that i had healed and how i was able to know that i actually forgave because for a long time i was like mm, i don't know like this person did too much damage i don't think i can forgive this person you know she just started like you know kind of opening her heart more and god started to like break her and really speak to her and i just wish i could have done more like it was a professional setting so i couldn't do what i usually do at my church which is you know really disciple these girls and you know have those one-on-one -on -one conversations god god really you know he shows me stuff even when i talk to people you know i know that this is a get ready with me for church but girl if you haven't been to church because someone did something to you this is your sign that you need to find a church so guys i'm all ready and i did something quick with my hair um i'm sorry i didn't really go on with this story but yeah i have kind of something more you know casual it's midweek service so i am wearing just a regular white coat i'm kidding um, but anyways, for my perfume, I'm gonna use my aqua. Um, so I love smelling good. Yes, oh, I love it. I love it. But anyways, yeah, I'm gonna go praise the Lord, and I'm leading worship. So.